very excited at the moment because I'm going to university. Yes. Just like that, I've been at uni for an entire year now. Hello humans, what is up? I'm Stuart and today I'm going to be talking about my first year at university. Well, I say my first year, I mean more like I'm going to be talking about my foundation year experience. Now please don't kill me because I've done foundation year, alright? In a nutshell, foundation year is an extra year at uni so they can charge you as much money as possible because now unis apparently want as many people paying the nine grand a year as possible. Alright, I'm just being silly. Now foundation year in a nutshell is basically an extra year for them to teach you all the prior knowledge you might need plus a little bit more so you can get onto the first year of your course and not fall behind. Otherwise, you'll be spending so much time catching up you might as well have gone back to school. That said, who would be the ones to benefit from a foundation year then? Well, there are really two types of people for that. The first type are those going in with the wrong subjects, because it doesn't matter if you get three A's or three U's. For some people, you can't expect to succeed in an engineering degree with A-levels in, say, English, philosophy and sports. And as for the second type of people, basically me, are those who didn't quite get the grades to get into year one. So the uni basically offers them a second chance by doing a foundation year so they can catch up on all the advanced level knowledge they need without the advanced level pressure of exams. And as for my second run, well I'm very pleased to say it was a lot better than my first. So, you've got that unconditional offer, and you're now merrily enrolling at uni, thinking I'll never have to deal with as much homework as I did from school again. Yup, because even in foundation year engineering, we have these things called labs. Basically a physics experiment somewhat like the ones you used to do in school. Except, this time, the write-ups are a lot longer, and by that I mean about 10 sheets of paper, give or take. Ah, <sighs> free time. You know, sometimes I really do feel like I had a bit too much of that on my hands, but I don't know how much I'm going to be missing that in the future, because apparently that's going to be pretty much non-existent at some point. Anyway, about that free time. During my foundation year, I actually had a lot more of it than I was expecting. I mean, this is what my timetable looked like, and you can see that I don't have that many lectures a week, except for four hours of maths on a Thursday afternoon, because who doesn't like that? I really enjoyed doing math. Nope. I really enjoy doing math with my lecturers. Moving on, now you see the tutorial slots every now and then, which, well, is kind of what it says on the tin. If you turn up to it, you can get what is effectively a private tutor session, which you'd otherwise be paying about 30 or 40 quid an hour for. With all that free time in your hands, it's kind of hard not to go out and experience a few new things, isn't it? Unfortunately for some people, that's also when money problems kick in, because that seemingly endless sum of money, that's more than what you've ever imagined, arriving in your bank account in September has somehow magically vanished. You've spent more money than you knew what to do with. Well, then you've got a few months or however long it is until you go home and live with your parents again of poverty experience, during which you'd better hope you like pasta, because chances are 20 piece spaghetti from some supermarket is probably going to be your best friend forever and ever and ever. I mean, it's probably not going to be that extreme, but for some people it is. And I know it sounds harsh, I know it sounds scary, but hey oh, that's life. What can we do about it? And finally, should I have stayed in school for an extra year? There are multiple sides to this argument, and we'll start with why I should. I should have stayed in school for an extra year because that could have saved me about £14,000 a year, but the last time I went to school, I was getting charged about £12,000 a year anyway. Another reason why I should have stayed in school. If I'm not getting into year one until 2018 anyway, why didn't I use that year to try and get better grades? Well, the problem with that is this byproduct of advanced level exams called advanced level time pressure. And as I found out through foundation year, well, that just doesn't work on me. Because how do you explain going from I could have done better to actually doing a lot better, especially in the uni environment where they're trying to chuck you stuff that school will never teach you as well. On top of that, during the foundation year I also got to learn stuff that was beyond school 
and beyond A level and well into year one as well. So not only did I manage to recap on all the stuff that I needed to carry over from school, I also got a bit further. So chances are when I do go back in a few weeks, semester one should be quite familiar. Of course there are always going to be new stuff and of course the stuff is going to get harder, I'm not saying it won't, but it's good to know that there'll be stuff that will be so familiar to you that you're ready to build on top of it and go further. So ultimately let's answer the big question. Should I have stayed in school for an extra year? Well despite the hefty price tag of £14,000 a year and considering how much more I actually got out of the year than I thought I would, I think this ultimately was a good decision. There is a chance I may decide to retake the A-level exams again at some point, but I want to be keeping that in reserve until I actually need it. So that is it guys, that was my first year experience at uni, aka my foundation year experience at uni. Hopefully you found this informative and somehow entertaining. Please note all of this was my opinion, don't take my word for it because it differs for everyone. And please don't hate me for my opinion, but hopefully you enjoyed this anyway and if you did, give it a big fat one of these. And for whatever more content that I decide to chuck at the internet, give that cheeky little subscribe button a click. It's big, it's red, you can't miss it and it's completely free. But otherwise, Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again in the next video. Stay tuned.